Welcome. Uh, we're very lucky today to have as a guest uh, the author Eliyahu Matz uh, coming to us uh, from uh, Great Barrington, Massachusetts. Uh, he's the author of this book, uh, Auschwitz on the Potomac, 1943, Hillel Cook, The Attempt to Save European Jewry and the Birth of the Israeli Nation, uh, which is published by Washington Books. And I have to admit bias right off the top, I was the editor and I've known Ellie for many years. I think it's a very important book. And he's gonna talk about uh, three things today. Uh, the role of uh, Peter Bergson, also known as Hillel Cook, who he says is the most important Jew in 2000 years. Uh, the uh, role of Peter Bergson in World War II, his role in the birth of Israel, and the legacy of Peter Bergson's uh, analysis, which he feels could lead to some solutions, I think, for the crisis Israel is facing today, if people would only listen to what he had to say. And uh, with that, I want to turn it over to uh, Ellie. So uh, Ellie, uh, the floor is yours. Can I speak now? Yes. Okay. So uh, I started by telling you how I found the document that tells us that FDR knew about the Holocaust. Of course, that document, as I said, is a very important document because, uh, 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 first of all, it was a new document that nobody paid attention to, nobody found. In any case, in, in that document, uh, we suddenly have a, a piece of information in which uh, uh, somebody uh, wrote in a meeting with FDR, uh, uh, one of the Jewish leaders, uh, who, who participated in that meeting with FDR in which uh, basically he writes about the fact that FDR knew about the Holocaust. And that was a very important uh, issue to, to, first of all, to discover, to figure out what, what, what is the story. In any case, the Jewish leadership meets in the White House on December 8, uh, 1942 at noontime. They arrive, the president, instead of them telling the president what is going on, he's telling them what's going on. And uh, that's it, nothing is happening, okay? The Jewish leadership, uh, I asked him for a statement. He made a statement, he wrote a statement. He agreed to make a statement. The issue was, how do you stop this massacre? Now into this picture, comes uh, Mr. Bergson. Of course, Mr. Bergson is a Palestinian uh, uh, Jew who arrives in the United States in 1940 in, in, in August, a little bit before August 1940. And when he arrives here, he is basically becoming the chief uh, hancho or the chief uh, organizer of the Yigun Tzvail Umi, the what we call the, the Etzel. Etzel is, is, a, is an Israeli terrorist group that wanted to do one thing, to get rid of the British, okay? And uh, the, the commander of, of the Irgun uh, at that time was killed in Iraq. And uh, that commander, Raziel, was a personal friend of, of Mr. Bergson. Uh, in any case, uh, the leadership of, of the, this Irgun passes to Mr. Bergson in New York. And Mr. Bergson has a variety of dilemmas to deal with. One of them is he was trying to work on, on an issue called the Jewish army. I'm not talking about the Jewish brigade. He was talking about an army, a quarter of a million more than that people to fight against the Germans. Uh, the second thing he is he's trying to figure out what to do with the Irgun in Palestine, how to revive it. The third issue is what to do in America here in order to get the Jews a, 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 a protest against the, the massacre of European Jewry. So the uh, up to the year uh, uh, end of 49, in 1942, November of 1942, a little bit later, Bergson is busy with the idea of creating an army, but that failed because the United States authorities, military and otherwise, decided that they were not really interested in such a force or whatever. In any case, Bergson picks up on the idea of the massacre of European Jewry and starts a campaign, mostly, mostly in the year 1943, but uh, uh, the year 1943, 
starts actually a, a little bit earlier for him because by the time he gets into this campaign to save European Jewry, he has already been in a variety of campaigns and connected with a variety of individuals in Congress and in public life in America, which means he has a lot of, he, he accumulated a lot of experience in working with public figures in the halls of Congress and in, 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 in trying to make statements and even uh, producing full page ads in the New York Times. And, and that's how we start. So when I worked with Wyman on this issue calling the, the American response or the American Jewish leadership response to the Holocaust, Wyman said to me, listen, you got to go and visit Mr. Bergson. And eventually I did visit him and uh, after we had uh, some sort of an argument, one second. Okay. Oh, it's again, this is English. Can I talk? I cannot hear you. Yes, you can talk. Okay. Um, in any case, uh, in the year 1943, uh, Bergson uh, puts all his uh, efforts in an attempt to save European Jewry, something that was not done by the American Jewish leadership. Uh, now, uh, what, what did the American Jewish leadership do in 1943? They were busy with ideas about Zionism in the future. Now, why are they busy with ideas of uh, Zionism in the future? Uh, they are busy because in 1942, there was a Biltmore conference in which Ben-Gurion participated. And then at that conference in New York in the Biltmore Hotel in May, 1942, the, the Zionists came up with the idea of creating a Jewish commonwealth. What is a Jewish commonwealth? Only God knows. In any case, and that, at that meeting, at that Zionist meeting, one of the rabbis who was a, a, a his name was Emmanuel, Emmanuel Neumann, uh, was uh, was familiar with Hillel and uh, Mr. Bergson and familiar with Ben Gurion, uh, tried to get them together to discuss this issue, and which he was successful. Uh, he did it in his apartment in Manhattan, and then there was a conversation there about uh, the the condition of the Jews at that time. And Mr. Bergson had his ideas, and Mr. Ben Gurion had his ideas. In any case. The, the, the Zionist movement in America with Abba Hillel Silver and uh, Stephen Wise moved into the direction of creating an American Jewish conference that started in September 43, uh, uh, meaning that they did not focus on any, anything practical on saving Jews during the year 1943. And that was the, the, the year Bergson did all his tricks in order to convince the American government uh, uh, to, to, to take, make an effort to save Jews. In any case, uh, Bergson efforts started in Madison Square Garden with the, the, a pageant called We Will Never Die. Uh, it, it continued with a conference in Manhattan in the uh, Commodore Hotel in, 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 July, in June or July, in June, I think it's in June in 1943. It, continu it continued in Congress, in the Congress of the United States where he got some allies among them, Will Rogers Jr. and, and a, a Senator from, from, uh, from uh, Utah, Mr. Thomas. Uh, in, a, in any case, uh, after a, a year work of, of pay, uh, uh, putting ads in the papers, pushing uh, ideas in the public, uh, advertisements, uh, conversations in Congress. Uh, we suddenly have in the Congress of the United States a hearing. And the hearing happens in, in November 1943. And what is the hearing about? The hearing is, is, is uh, about uh, the European situation. Okay. 
and uh, the man who leads the hearing is supposedly a Zionist and one of the worst Jews ever created, ever created in the world, Saul Bloom. Okay, he was the head of the uh, foreign, foreign, uh, what do you call it, foreign issues in the in the Congress of the United States. Now, as we enter into this hearing about the, the fate of Jews in Europe, uh, of course, uh, we have to understand the, the political scene behind it. The State Department didn't want a single thing, a single word about it, didn't want to do anything. They did, as a matter of fact, everything possible not to have a, a, a thing like this. In any case, when the hearing starts in, in the Congress, uh, Mr. Blooms, as I said, one of the worst Jews, a, a congressman from New York, one of the worst Jews ever, uh, ever to, to appear on the scene, on the American scene, decides to make the hearing an executive hearing. And once you do an executive hearing, the, the thing is, uh, the, the, the hearing is closed for 30 years. So when we did research in the, in the end of the 1970s, early 80s, and we, uh, we could not find the, the, word, the, the, the minutes of the hearing. And then it turned out after I looked in the Library of Congress and other libraries that the Librarian of Congress made a mistake and put a headline, a different headline to that hearing. In any case, I found that hearing. In that hearing, Mr. Bergson appears uh, in the Congress of the United States. And what is the issue? There, the issue is saving Jews. Now, since Mr. Saul Bloom was against against uh, saving Jews, which is in itself an interesting uh, idea. He, he's trying to interrogate uh, Mr. Bergson. By the way, he called him from the audience. It was not in a, something that was announced before. In, in any case, the hearing starts and Mr. Bergson tells him, now we'll go back and now we'll go forward to the Israeli situation today. This is the first time in Jewish history and the history of Jews in the world, uh, 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 the commander of the Irgun in the United States appears at the Congress of the United States and tells us, this congressman that in the future, when a nation is going to be built, it will be a Hebrew Republic. Not only will it be a Hebrew Republic, but it will also be a Republic which will write the constitution. By the way, this is the only place in, in Zionist literature that you see such a thing appearing. In any case, the hearing was nonsense. Uh, Bergson, in one way or another, uh, convinced the United States government. As a matter of fact, uh, you cannot understand uh, FDR's behavior towards the creation of the War Refugee Board in, in, 19, uh, in, the, in January 1944 without understanding that Mr. Bergson bent his hands, okay? And bending his hands was the only reason FDR did what he did supposedly to save Jews. But again, there was a big, a big problem there because the organization was not called a, 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 a board to save Jews, but it's called a, a, ref, ward, a, a war refugee board. They only God knows what refugees are. They were kill, killing Jews and FDR decided to call it refugees. In any case, Bergson saw that he has nothing to do anymore with the, trying to push the United States into, into the doing something to save Jews. He knew that it will not work. He was sure that this, but he couldn't disturb them and he didn't want to do anything more to, to, to turn things upside down. In any case, he decides uh, that the future is more important than the past. Okay, whatever, whatever Jews are going to be left, eventually they'll have to establish a, a nation. And in 1944, towards the May of 1944, he creates an organization which is called the Hebrew, uh, the the Republic, the Hebrew, uh, uh, the Republic of, of uh, what's the name? Uh, 
Hebrew Committee of National Liberation. The Hebrew, Liberation. no, the Hebrew Hebrew Committee of National Liberation, which is, w carries it with, within it. The Hebrew Committee of National Liberation establishes a, an embassy in Washington, and on that embassy, he uh, 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 puts the flag, uh, the Israeli flag that was uh, already uh, created in Palestine in the 1880s. Bergson, uh, after he finished the work on trying to, cre to create an organization or some, or some sort of, of a venue to save Jews. And he saw that he, it was not working well because the United States established the War Refugee Board, which was not a, a board to save Jews, but to save refugees. Uh, 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 playing with words uh, uh, did not help to save European Jews. In any case, the United States government was not really interested in saving Jews. And that is a long story. Wyman and I discussed it a uh, hundred times, if not more than that. The United States uh, in World War II uh, 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 did not want to save Jews. The, the story is a little bit more, more complicated. They could save Jews, but didn't want to save Jews. And the reason they didn't want to save Jews was that if they are going to save them, where are they going to take them? And believe it or not, that was the, the logic behind the, the president of the United States and his associates. And that includes Jews who worked for him. Okay, in any case, Bergson tries, tries what he tries in the year 1943, which was the main year of, of his activity in the United States or, or maybe in Jewish history. He tried, uh, without tremendous efforts to try to, to, to save Jews. Uh, uh, president finally uh, agrees to do something, but they, what he agrees to do is not really uh, uh, great. In any case, Bergson decides that he's gonna take the, what you call and put the wagon in front of the horse, okay? And establish a Hebrew embassy. Now, how did he get the money to buy a building in Washington? Uh, who gave him the idea to do so? Uh, there's a whole bunch of things uh, uh, evolved here. Uh, first of all, we have to remember one thing. When Bergson arrived here as a young man uh, in the middle of 1940, uh, he immediately got hooked up with a, with a woman uh, and, and they became, she became his lover. Now this lady, uh, this Jewish lady called uh, uh, Frances Gunter was the, the ex-wife or later she became the ex-wife of Mr. Gunter, uh, the famous guy who wrote books, he was a journalist. In any case, uh, Mrs. Gunter or uh, Frances Gunter uh, was connected in one way or another to uh, Nero, the, the, the future leader of, of, of India. And she was involved in issues and, and had an interest in nationalities, creating of nationalities. And in between you and me, she probably got him the idea, the, got the idea to him and uh, got the idea into uh, Bergson's head. So uh, when Bergson establishes a Hebrew embassy as part of the Hebrew Committee of National uh, Liberation and raises the Israeli flag, I mean, the Jewish flag that was established in Palestine in the 1880s, uh, it creates lots of problems in America. First of all, the entire Zionist organizations are against him because they, it, it's, very clear what, uh, it's very clear what he's trying to do. He's trying to take the, the world leadership of Jewry and say, I'm, I'm going to represent uh, Jews. Uh, in any case, the picture behind your uh, face there, Larry, uh, Larry, the picture of the Altalena was the end result of that raising the, uh, raising the flag of, 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 in 1944. In, 1940, in 1948, Ben-Gurion responded by blowing up that ship as a result of raising the flag in, uh, in 1944. But of course the process uh, how to discover this thing took me many, many, many years. Okay, it was not a simple thing to, the, to figure out that the, uh, raising the flag in Washington uh, bombed the, the, the Altalena on the beach of Tel Aviv. In any case, uh, Bergson uh, being a smart person and a, a person who understood 
that, uh, by the way, he invented the, the, the term, which is called post-Zionism. If you look at the, the papers in 1946, 1947, he is the guy who actually invented the term. He wrote even a, a few notes about it and he spoke to people. He said, the Zionist movement is coming to its goal. We are achieving our goal. Soon we're gonna have a nation. Therefore, we're gonna start, uh, we're gonna be post-Zionists. This was not, a, was not a negative thing. It was not a positive thing. It was po a real politic, okay? In any case, now, if we are going to establish a state, we probably need, will need to write a constitution. Bergson wanted the Hebrew Republic because he thought it will reflect a, a, a better way of handling the difficult situation in Palestine in those days. Uh, don't, we cannot forget one thing. He was an anti-British individual. The British were running after him. He himself was anti-British. And, and while he was here in the United States, he basically established Begin as the leader of the Irgun in Palestine. And he did it by sending one of his men from New York to Palestine to reestablish an, a, a, the, the, the Irgun that was falling apart. So his hands were all over. In any case, his idea of a nation was to establish a republic with a written constitution. Now, uh, he appeared in 1948, uh, on a day after Ben-Gurion read his famous declaration of creating a, a synagogue nation. He didn't like it. He couldn't figure out what that Ben-Gurion, that socialist is doing. Uh, reading a statement that was supposed to be Jeffersonian, but in reality, it was a statement of creating a synagogue. Now, you don't find a single word in that statement or declaration of Ben-Gurion in 1948 in Tel Aviv that the na a new nation is being born. Ben-Gurion is talking about an old nation, the uh, nation of King David that we don't know if it existed or not. I know we have star beautiful stories in the Bible about it, but in reality, go and figure out. In any case, Bergson got uh, pissed off. Uh, he, went, he went back a few days later to, to Europe and, and the United States. But since the Altalena was organized by money that was raised from uh, the, the Broadway show that Ben Hecht wrote, and Marlon Brando, or Marlon Brando participated, the flag and born, a flag is born in, 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 in Broadway. Uh, Bergson thought uh, that he should be there and he arrived with, with a private plane from France. In any case, he arrived a, a day or two before the Altalena has arrived. And uh, uh, the story of the Altalena is well known. Uh, ben Gurion blew it, blew it out. The reason of course, from, from my point of view, the only reason uh, that he blew up the Antalena was to, to, to kill Bergson because he knew, Ben-Gurion knew that Bergson is a bigger enemy for him or a, a bigger opponent to him than, than Beggy. In any case, on the Antalena was also uh, Samuel Merlin, a uh, 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 Bergson assistant, and he was severely wounded. Uh, 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 Bergson was not on the Altalena. He was on the uh, on the shore, and the Ben Gurion uh, gave an order to kill him. But the people who arrested the, uh, uh, Bergson did not want to do that. They refused to do it because they knew his family, and his family was a very prominent family in Palestine before the war. In any case, Ben Gurion puts him in jail, and after two three months, he releases him. And uh, now we have an establishment of what you call the illegal establishment of the Israeli Knesset because the Knesset was not supposed to be a Knesset. It was supposed to be a, 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 a constitutional assembly. And Ben-Gurion decided that he doesn't want to have a constitutional assembly. He wants to have a Knesset instead. So Bergson said to him, he's, by, by the way, he, he and Ari Jabotinsky are the only ones in the Israeli Knesset who protest that thing. In any case, Ben-Gurion did what he did. Israel was uh, on its way to become a nation, uh, not a nation of laws, but a nation of, uh, a nation of, of, of uh, a, a crazy, crazy 
irregularities. Uh, listen, the most important thing in the creation of a nation, any nation, it doesn't matter which it is, is to defining who the citizens of the nations are, who are the, who are the people who live in the nation. And that was not done in 1948 or 1949. Which means that you know today, the only nationality that is not recognized in the Israeli nation is Israeli nationalities. Israeli national. Okay, Israel recognizes 150 nationalities, but not an Israeli uh, nationality. They, 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 now they changed the, the rules of, of the Knesset, changed it to a Jewish, a Jewish nationality. And of course, Judaism is a, is a, is a religion, not a nationality. No wonder that the Druze in Israel are going nuts. Forget about, uh, you see, in, in France, uh, the French people were colonialists, the same as the British were. Uh, 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 at the end of co colonialism ended up with few million uh, 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 what you call North Africans who came to live with them, to work, to live. And the French being a co colonialist and anti, anti whatever, called those people les Arabes, the Arabs. And in Israel, you got the same idea. The Palestinians who live with us in Israel are called the Arabs. Of course, there's no such thing as an Arab. A, Syria, a Syrian who lives in Syria is a Syrian, not an Arab. A Jordanian who lives in Jordan is, is, an, is, a, is a Jordanian. An Egyptian lives in Egypt is an Egyptian. In any case, Bergson understood all those uh, political term terminologies and, and he said he started, there's, there's few discussions he conducts in the Knesset of the, of the Israeli Knesset in which he's trying to explain the Israelis that this is not going to function like that. It's impossible not to write a constitution to the Israeli nation. Of course, he was ignored. He eventually left Israel. Uh, and the story today is in the street of Tel Aviv. This is the story. All the, all the things that you see on the streets of Tel Aviv are the result of not writing a constitution, not understanding which nationality we are living in uh, uh, and, and uh, going back to America, uh, it brings out the, uh, the failure of American Jewish leadership to do anything in the Holocaust. And now they, those, that leadership, the American Jewish leadership of today, the right wing, Leadership is fueling the Israeli uh, uh, laws of, of, of the Knesset in order to make the situation worse than it was before. Did I explain myself? Okay, thank you. That was very, very interesting. Uh, and I have to say, I, I took this picture of the monument to the uh, Altalena uh, that's above me uh, on the beach uh, in Israel when I was visiting, and I remembered. Bergson himself told me that Ben Gurion was trying to kill him, and I, I didn't understand it at the time. But I think you explained it very well. He saw him. Not only was he against yeah. the Irgun, but he saw him as a rival for uh, power. And, that that, uh, that was that was the issue. The issue was raising the raising of the flag in Washington in 1944 was a, a, a turning point in Ben Gurion's head. Vis-a-vis uh, -vis the issue is who is going to control the 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 situation in Palestine there after this war is over. You understand? And by the way, yes. if you look at Zionist, if you look at the Zionist literature that was produced in the in 1944, 1945, 1946, you can see that it's all aimed against Bergson. Okay, because they understood very well, very well in America, as well in, in Palestine, that this, this person is going to be the, their rival. And they were right, by the way, because he is the only person who comes up with the, with the intellectual uh, uh, mechanism or intellectual 
uh, uh, ideas to create an Israeli nation. By the way, uh, you know, he installed uh, Begin to be the uh, leader of the Irgun. Uh, I write it in the book. Begin was the worst choice to be, to be the leader of the Irgun. Okay, first of all, he never understood what the American Irgun Tzvai Lumi was doing in, in, in the United States. Second of all, you can see his behavior at the Knesset. He doesn't support Bergson with, with the idea of constitution. Okay, listen, it's, it's uh, whoever is going to study Israeli history from 1948 uh, on, will have to deal with all the issues that I've written in the book, which are, are uh, starting with, with the, the, the issues of World War II and progressing toward the Israeli conditions that we are today. There is no other way of looking into those things. Let me ask you a question. You also mentioned to me previously that Netanyahu's father was very against Bergson, which is interesting well, because people think of Bergson as a right winger, but he wasn't. But he was opposed both by Begin and by Netanyahu's father, even though well, this might, having a constitutional convention might give Israel a way out of the mess they're in right now that's not a civil war. What, what is the opposition of well, Netanyahu's least, father to Bergson? Listen, I'll tell you something about Netanyahu. Uh, uh, Jabotinsky dies, the big Jabotinsky, Zev Jabotinsky dies in August, in August 1940. Uh, the revisionists at that time uh, did not have a leadership, a, an alternative leader. Okay, one of the uh, contenders for leadership was Netanyahu's uh, father, Ben Zion Netanyahu, who was uh, uh, the famous historian of the, the Spanish expulsion. He wrote a famous book or a PhD on uh, uh, Barbanel, Don Itzhak Barbanel, uh, or Barbanel, uh, the, the famous Jewish leader who uh, Jewish historians uh, have uh, all sorts of problems with. In any case, uh, the revisionists in America are a marginal group and Bergson, uh, between you and me, you have to remember something very fundamental here. Bergson is not a revisionist. He was never a, a revisionist. He could not think like a revisionist. He had nothing to do with the, the theories, even with Jabotinsky. As a matter of fact, the head of the Irgun in Palestine, Raziel, which was a, a childhood, childhood friend of, of Mr. Bergson, had difficulties with, with the Jabotinsky. And the reason for that was that the Irgun, Irgun in Palestine wanted to get rid of the British in, in violence or whatever it is, just to get rid of them. That was not really accepted by anybody, including Jabotinsky. In any case, when uh, uh, Jabotinsky dies and supposedly Netanyahu's father, Ben Zion, takes over some sort of a, a leadership role in the revisionist movement, there is no connection between him uh, and Bergson. Bergson has nothing to do with him. He doesn't participate in anything. I told you from before, uh, that Bergson is not a revisionist, okay? In any case, when Bergson establishes the uh, embassy, uh, even Ben Sion Netanyahu understood uh, who is taking over the leadership of the Jews in the modern world? And part of his campaign against Bergson was to write articles against him. And those articles are in the public domain today. And if anybody in the world, any political science, scientist in the world will understand what that, what Ben Sion Netanyahu wrote in those days, by the way, in Hebrew, and in English, uh, I will give him a, a, a gold medal. Okay? Yeah, you understand? The, the, the Zionist movement in its totality did not understand that in order to, to establish a nation, you have to declare that you have to, to you are the, declaring that you are actually establishing a nation. 
And to do so in Washington was a courageous act, by the way, the only way to explain the world that we are going to become a nation. Because if you have done it in London, they would arrest you. If you had done it in Buenos Aires, they would kill you. If you had done it in Shanghai, I have no idea what they would have done it. You, you understand that the, 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 the greatness of the act? Now, most, most historians never understood that, including Ben Sio Netanyahu. Now, if you listen, if you listen to his son Netanyahu and his political nonsense behind him, he's not talking about an Israeli nation, he's talking about the Jewish nation. And the Jewish nation is, is, is a non-existent, non-existent entity. There's no such a thing in the world because Judaism is a religion, not a political uh, entity. Did I explain myself? Yes, and one other thing you said to me, actually, Bergson was the heir to Jabotinsky himself. You mentioned there was an untranslated uh, Jabotinsky lecture, which I think you were gonna translate. No, no, the, it's uh, not a lecture. It's not a lecture, it's a book. Okay, and it's the book, book. I, I translated, the book is translated already to English. I translated the book, a small book that appeared in 1937 and a year before that, I think it appeared in Polish in Varsa. Okay, but the, there is a Hebrew version of it that was published in Tel Aviv. Okay, and in the title of the book is a Hebrew nation. Okay, and I think between you and me, I think Bergson, adapted that thing, but he changed it to a Hebrew Republic. But what I'm saying is, it seems to me that even you say he wasn't an Irgunist, he was following the lead of Jabotinsky, and that yeah, should but, be but something see, that people Jab like Jabotinsky. Netanyahu should pay attention to. No, 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 you see, Bergson was never a Jabotinsky admirer. He might be an admirer, but he never, he was not a follower. Let, let's, let's make it clear, the reason, uh, Bergson is involved with Jabotinsky has to do with his commander in Palestine, Raziel, okay? Because Raziel was an anti-Jabotinsky person. As a, take it even, let's go even further than that. You see, when Jabotinsky dies, uh, his son, Ari, uh, was released from jail uh, in Palestine and arrived in America so he can be with his mother. Because, uh, you know, the father died. And when uh, Jabotinsky, the son, Ari, arrives in America, he was, by the way, he was a Beitarist and a revisionist. He, 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 he takes those the revisionism and, and his Beitarism and throws them into the garbage, into the Hudson River, and he becomes a, a Bergson follower. Okay? And he was so till the end of his life. You, you understand the, 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 this is Jabotinsky's son. Now uh, you heard about the, uh, uh, you, you understand the concept of a Jewish bris. You know what a Jewish yes. bris is? Okay, it's a yes. very important, you know, my, our son Mike, uh, his, his godfather was uh, Mr. Bergson. Okay, but in uh, 1948, or before that when uh, Jabotinsky's a grandson was born. Uh, Mr. Begin was invited to the bris, and Mr. Bergson was invited to the bris. And Mr. Begin thought that he's going to be the godfather. And Jabotinsky, every Jabotinsky said to him, I'm sorry, but it's going to be Mr. Bergson. Okay? You understand that this friendship that developed between them? Uh, by the way, if you look at the political ideas that developed in, in, uh, in Ari Jabotinsky's mind, you will see that he was thrown out of the begging party. Hmm. Okay, now- What, what, do you think the, what do you think the legacy is? Is there a legacy of Bergson today in Israel? Is there anyone who follows his ideas? Well, there, of course there's a legacy, but the legacy is, uh, 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 listen, uh, uh, what is, you know, the, I'll tell you, you heard about Garibaldi. You know, Garibaldi came from America on a ship with a bunch of uh, Italian-Americans or whatever they call them, 
uh, intellectuals and came to Italy and said to the Pope, hey, either you get out of my way, okay? Or, or you, I'll do to you what, uh, uh, whatever is necessary. We are establishing today an Italian Republic. And so it was. Few years after the establishment of the Italian Republic, one of uh, Garibaldi's, uh, Garibaldi's uh, uh, associates says to Garibaldi, and it's very important to, to, to listen to this, you know, we established a, a, a Republic, now we have to establish Italians. You, you understand? It was, it's, it, establishing a nation is not a, a, a hocus pocus, okay? The American Republic was not a hocus pocus. There was a, there was a need to, to do a lot of work here, intellectual work uh, uh, to, to make America what it is, America. And that's what Bergson thought when he came up with the idea of creating a Hebrew Republic. Now, why did he want the Hebrew Republic? By the way, you don't, uh, uh, you, you can call it Israeli Republic. It doesn't really matter, okay? A Hebrew Republic, a Republic because there's a French speaking Republic and the English speaking Republic and an American speaking English Republic. It was a natural thing to call it a Hebrew. You understand? But in Israel, things got confused. For, uh, the, the issue of nationality was never clear, never uh, established as a legal uh, a document in Israeli law. You know, I, I, you are familiar with my, my attempt to, to bring this issue, the Bergson issue of Israeli, of being Israeli uh, into the Israeli Supreme Court. Around 12 years ago, I edited a document Okay, that a bunch of people uh, 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 participated and contributed money, including me, to challenge the Israeli law, uh, legal system. And it was brought to the, the Israeli Supreme Court uh, in order to, to create a nationality called Israeli. The Supreme Court is 12 years ago, the same judge who's bringing, is bringing the havoc uh, that is now created in Tel Aviv, Judge Solberg, the same guy, he said in that document in the answer to our uh, claim that Eli Matz is a hostile person to the Israeli nation, to the Jewish people. You understand that, 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 that craziness? This is the judge. So, so the same judge told you, who are an Israeli, and you fought in the Israeli army, and... Uh, your family are in Israel, that you're hostile to Israel. Right, not to me, it was a whole group of people. I was not, I was only, I, I was, you see, in Israel, as well as in America, a, a lot of Jews, and I'm saying it in, in general, do not understand the issue of sovereignty, which was the issue that Bergson was trying to tell them. That they, all the talk about Jews and Jews here, Jews there, is a wonderful idea. But once you establish a territory, you need to claim sovereignty and you establish a nationality. What is it? How difficult is that to, to explain? And that's what they that's what they don't want. So the, the judge. So you could have you could have the chief rabbi in Jerusalem, like the Pope. Uh, and uh, uh, separate uh, the rabbinate from the national government the same way Garibaldi did in Italy. That's correct. Not only this, by the way, Bergson was not against religion, neither am I. It has nothing to do with religion. It has to do with the functioning of a nation. Okay? If you are going to tell the Druze, the Druze people who serve in the Israeli army, which are, by the way, I served with them, in, in the Golan Heights in, in, in Lebanon uh, years ago, you are going to tell them that they are not part of the Israeli society. You're taking a bullet and putting it in your head. That's what you're doing. It doesn't make any sense. So what and do you I, think now that we're, we're the end, what do you think the chances are of someone in Israel reading your book? And by the way, this book is also available in a, uh, in a Hebrew uh, edition, which you wrote. Um, and uh, uh, what is the title of it in Hebrew? And how can people get the Hebrew edition? 
Do you see any impact, anyone reading it and anyone trying well, to bring is, Ferguson's there is, ideas? Uh, there is, uh, you know, one of the most important Israeli historian, uh, mil military historian, actually he served in me in the same uh, brigade in the party for, uh, interviewed me three times already uh, about this book. The, the unfortunate- What's his name? What's his name? Milstein, Uri Milstein, Dr. Uri Milstein. You, you ever heard about the, the, uh, the, the Israeli poet, uh, Rachel? Yeah. You ever heard about it? That's her nephew. Yeah. That's her nephew. Okay. He's a, he's a, he, he was originally the historian of our part for the vision. Okay, and he became a historian of Israeli wars and anything that is uh, connected to Israeli, Israeli, Israelism. Okay, but you see, it's very difficult to explain Israelis, that they are actually Israelis. How do you explain it? This was Bergson's biggest problem. Now, there is a movement in Israel now. There's a, an a intellectual movement in Israel which is uh, called the Organization for Israeli Thinking. That organization conducts seminars and does all kinds of, it, it even gives a prize on, on Bergson's name. Okay. Oh, so there, I didn't know. Yeah, there is such an organization. The head of the organization is Professor Avner Ben Zaken, who is a, who is a good friend of mine. Uh, uh, but but you see, it, it's not a wide it, it's not a wide uh, a movement at this moment. Um, the Israelis have have so many difficulties to figure out who they are, politically and otherwise, that they 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 cannot even think about it. Let me okay, ask you a question: I, Why can't Why can't Israel have a constitutional convention? And ah, we cannot have a con Israel cannot have a constitution at all. Okay, even though that's what Bergson wants, because of a very simple reason. Who are you going to write a constitution for? I told you the French call it les Arabes, the Arabs. Are we going to write an, a constitution for the a million Arabs who live with us? By the way, I don't like the term Arabs, they are Palestinians. You see, the, the most important issue in Israeli society today, which comes out from my studies with Bergson, my conversations with him, uh, my ideas that came from him, and all sorts of other things that I picked up in history throughout the years. Okay, if we are not going to solve our uh, solve the political relationship with the Palestinians, we cannot function as a nation. Not a Jewish and not an Israeli and not a nothing nation. It's not going to function there. We have to turn things, things upside down there. And the strategic issue for all Israelis, and by the way, Palestinians too, is how do we, how do we become from enemies to friends? Polit not just friends, but uh, uh, political friends and allies. This is the issue. And that was on Bergson's mind, by the way, when I worked for him in New York in the Institute that was called the Institute of Med Mediterranean Affairs. Do you understand? Bergson saw the Israeli situation as a Mediterranean affair. And at one point or another, you needed to do something to make a move here to establish yourself as something which is political and not rabbinical. We have plenty of rabbis in Alaska or in Hawaii. That's not what Israel needs. Israel needs leadership. Ben Netanyahu is not leadership, he's anti-leader, anti-leadership, the same as his father was. You understand okay. that? But, uh, okay, but let's, let's get into the Bergson legacy. Um, so you say there can't be a constitutional convention, but at one point Bergson thought there could be. Uh, yes, you don't, crisis, you don't think this crisis. You don't think this crisis has the potential of getting people to stop and think. No, no, uh, no, saying, no. This, no, Larry. This, this crisis, the Israeli crisis today, is leading to a civil war. 
this is where the crisis leads because I told but wouldn't, you- But wouldn't a constitutional convention be better than a yes, civil it, war? It, well, but the constitutional convention for who? You have to figure it well, out. Who are we doing? Who are we doing? A well, you would figure it out. First, you'd call the convention. Then they'd fight over who gets no, to be a delegate. No, no, you know? no, 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 no. You have to figure it out ahead of time. You know, Larry, Larry Jarvik in Florida is not the target of the Israeli constitution. And the Israelis want Larry Jarvik to be an Israeli. That's why he's a Jewish people. And Larry Jarvik might be Jewish and he might- But, but just him. as you said, just as you said, with Italy, you can be Catholic, you can be an Italian American, but you're not an Italian citizen. What, Absolutely what's the difference? not. Uh, you do you do you do not belong to the Italian. The, the Garibaldi's problem was to take the past, throw it away, and establish a modern republic. That's all. But this is Regroup. what Bergson, Bergson told me. He was for the separation of the rabbinate and the state. Uh, no, so not clearly. No, no, no. He was for the separation of nationality and religion. Correct. Okay, I didn't say that, well. separate nationality that, and religion. That, by the way, okay. that is that was his the main issue, and that's what he brought up. By the way, from America. But why can't Israel do that and still be like? Italy is for Italian Americans. But because I, still... I just told you, the Israelis see themselves as their nationality as Judaism. And if your nationality is Judaism, how can you accept Muslims? It's impossible. Well, the Catholics have the same problem too. I mean, everybody the has the same But, but we, are not, we are not Catholics. And Muslims see? have the same problem accepting you Jews. You know, when I about... said, no, 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 it's not because the Muslims have uh, different ideas. Uh, they are the same as all, all religions in the world. They have all sorts of tribes and sects and everybody. They, 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 it's not a problem. The religion is not the problem. The issue has nothing to do with religion. The issue has to do with declaring who, which nationality are the Israelis, and they prefer not to call themselves so. This is the law that was passed. But this is, based on what you're saying is, this is the crux of the issue. Bergson tried to deal with it. Nobody wanted to deal with it. At some point you have to deal with it, or like with the Alta Lena, you talk about uh, civil war. The reason I have this picture here is because Bergson told me Israel was on the verge of a civil war, but then uh, Begin decided not to do that. And uh, they didn't have a civil war. No, no, uh, no. But... no. By the way, Begin's role in the Altalena is the, one of the most confused roles a leader can be in. I mean, books have been written about him and there, there's documents. You see, Begin's role in the Altalena is minimal. He was not, he was not, and it's obvious Ben-Gurion did not arrest him. Think about it, he arrested Mr. Bergson, okay? Everybody knew that Begin had nothing to do with anything here. Yeah, and, and besides, he wasn't such a great politician to begin with. You, under, you understand he was a minor player here. Most okay, people, but what I'm saying is, you, you were had a country on the crux of a civil war. It was avoided. There was no, Surely there, was there, no, ways, there are ways of avoiding a civil war. No, but that the, first of all, you cannot avoid the civil wars. 1948, the Altalena story was not a civil war because if everybody, if anybody paid attention to what happened between Ben Gurion and his associates and the conversation they had with the Irgun will know from the beginning that that was, Mr. Bergson told uh, Begin, by the way, at that meeting when they, they were conversing, that the ship, the entire ship goes to the, uh, the, the Israeli army. Forget about the 20%, 10%. We have to disband the Irgun, we are done. It's finished, give them the ship. I don't want any more of this thing. Uh, don't forget, it was a, Be a Be Bergson ship. Bergson bought the ship, not Begin. You understand? In any case, listen, Israel is on the verge of, of, of a civil war today because you cannot, you cannot put a nation together if you don't have a set of law that includes the citizens of the nation. This is the problem. Who are, who, 
who are the citizens of the nation? When you go into a, a hospital in, in Tel Aviv or in, in, in Haifa or in Jerusalem, who are the doctors who are treating you? Do you know who they are? Palestinians. Huh? That's correct. Well, there's Palestinian doctors. That's correct, the nurses. We are tied together here, but we have to solve our problem politically, not with the uh, uh, creating a synagogue or, or mosque. We need to solve the issues politically to define first of all who we are. My suggestion was, and I think Bergson moved toward this thing, is create a, 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 a republic that will have Israelis and Palestinians, sort of a Swiss, Swiss solution. Okay, of cantons, by the way, the, the organization called uh, Israeli Thinking uh, has suggested it for the last two, three, four years already. already. It held conferences on, on that. It, 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 it came out publicly for it. And, and, and in that organization, you have a, a ex-military man as well as politicians. All right. Well, I think that's a good note to end on. So you do have some practical steps that can be taken to avoid a civil war. Your Swiss model, for example. There's no, uh, there's so, no uh, question. Okay. So I think we should wrap it up on an optimistic note. And uh, I'm just going to hold up the book again. Uh, Auschwitz on the Potomac, uh, 1943 uh, by Eliyahu Matz. And uh, you can get it at Amazon or Barnes and Noble, your local bookseller online. It's in a few libraries. You can ask your library to order it. I know that in the United States, uh, Yeshiva University has it, the Holocaust Museum has it, and one of your libraries up in the Berkshires has it. It'd be nice if there were more libraries. And there's a Hebrew edition. Do you want to say the name in Hebrew for people who speak Hebrew? Auschwitz al Hapotomak. Oh, it's the same. <laughs> okay. And I want to thank you for this. Um, and uh, uh, I think we'll uh, say uh, uh, good night and uh, I'll stop the recording now.